It's time for the One Bar and Lepica Show, bringing you anything and everything Minnesota Vikings. Welcome to professional football. All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lepica Show. I am Lepicus, and looks like One Bar is coming remote from some shack in the forest. I'm surrounded by pine. Look at all this pine. Can't believe Jeez. it. Is that knotted pine? I don't know what it is. Wow. No. All right, today we are going to uh, measure the Vikings' positions against the Colts in what we like to call the tail of the tape. Tail of the so tape, we'll as of up. now. As of right now, we're calling it tail of the tape. because Hell yeah. Position by position, see what team has the advantage. We're looking strictly at the personnel. Who would we rather take? And we are going to do this 100% completely without the purple lenses on. No purple lenses allowed. We're going with our heads, not our hearts. Let's do this. Let's start at quarterback. The Vikings quarterback crew against the Colts, which is pretty much Kirk Cousins versus Phil Rivers. Well, there's there's two aspects here you got to factor in. If I'm taking head to head the starter, I'm going with uh, Kirk Cousins, no doubt. Younger, uh, I mean, you got to love Philip Rivers. I think he's a Hall of Fame quarterback, and uh, you love the way he he's just a gamer. Uh, he loves football and he gets pissed off, and it's great to watch. But uh, right now, I'm taking Kirk Cousins. But look at the depth. Uh, I'm taking the Colts' depth here because they got Rivers, Jacoby Brissett, and then young Jacob Eason. Uh, the Vikings have shit after Kirk Cousins. So if we're going depth, I'm going Colts. If we're going starters, I'm, I'm going Vikings. Yeah, Phillip Rivers, uh, one of the all-time favorites. Like you said, he gets pissed off. I remember when him and Jake Cutler used to go at it We when they were wee young lads, and it was great to watch. But Phillip Rivers has started to decline with age. And uh, last, last week he threw one touchdown, two picks in that loss to the Jags. So, yes, absolutely Kirk Cousins depth-wise. Uh, yes, uh, I would take the Colts. But overall – I'm taking, I'm taking the Vikings on this one. I agree. I agree. Let's move on to the offensive line. Uh, you know, the Colts got Anthony Costanzo, Quentin Nelson, Ryan Kelly, Mike Lewinsky, Braden Smith. Uh, I think this is a slam dunk, no doubt. Uh, Colts simply have one of the best in the NFL and uh, light years ahead of the Vikings. Uh, yeah, they're, this isn't even much of a talker. Quentin Nelson, one of the best guards in the game. Costanzo, very good tackle. And, yeah, they're, and Ryan Kelly, another first-round pick. So they invested heavily on, the, on their offensive line. It is paying off. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think when we do tail of the tape every week, it's going to be pretty tough to beat the, to, for the Vikings to come out on top. Yeah, there's certain parts we don't have to measure, um, and the O-line is one. Well done, Colts. You still lost yeah. to the Jags. Jesus. All right, uh, wide receiver, let's go there next. Um, Colts got T.Y. Hilton, Zach Pascal, Paris Campbell, that sexy rookie Michael Pittman Jr., something called Austin Doolin, and Desmond Patman. Who are you taking? Uh, you know, I, I actually like the Colts wide receivers. Uh, Hilton, we know, is fantastic. Pittman is a guy I really wanted the Vikings to take. And Paris Campbell, I think, is going to have a damn good year. But uh, this is tough. I'm, I'm going to let you go first. Uh, well, I'm taking the Vikings just because I think the Vikings have the best receiver of the group. Adam Thielen, I would take him over T.Y. Hilton. Uh, Hilton gives you the speed. He's had some injury issues, but uh, a damn good receiver. Campbell hasn't broken out yet. Pascal flashed a little bit last year, and they got the unknown in the rookie Michael Pittman. So it's close. It's actually closer than I thought when you really sit and think this over because the Vikings don't have a lot of um, – you know, sure things other than Adam Thielen on, on their receiving core. Yeah, Adam Thielen's going to help us get over these uh, these close ones. And, and yeah, I, I will give it to the Vikings. Paris Campbell, I think he's going to be a thorn in our sides. He was 6 for 71 last week. And uh, the running backs, the running backs, and we're not there yet, but they love catching that ball out of the backfield. And T.Y. Hilton's T.Y. Hilton. But, yes, Vikings. Yay. Yeah, well, let's let's go to running back since you mentioned it. Um, you know, they lost their starter, Marlon Max. They're going with Jonathan Taylor. Nyheim Hines. We still have Jordan Wilkins down there. So uh, uh, against the Vikings, Delvin Cook, Alexander Madison, Mike Boone, Amir Abdullah, CJ Ham. I think I know which way you're going. Uh, yeah, yeah kind of like opposing offensive lines, it's going to be tough for, for the Vikings to not be the best out of the running backs out of every team we face. But um, Hine, uh, Hines, um, Jonathan Taylor, these guys catch the balls out of the backfield. This is going to be very, very tough. Um, but they're they're uh, they're going to be underrated. Hines, uh, Hines is quick, shifty, but uh, Vikings every every day of the week. I want a video of you just for two minutes saying Hines. Hines, over over. Hines. He's he's good. I remember. I know. <laughs> he's uh, he's going to get some yards. 
and so is Taylor. Yeah, Taylor's going to be their their lead back, no doubt about it. And he is. Uh, I, I almost wish we were going against Marlon Mack, to be honest. I no, I I, I will get more on that in our preview. But uh, yeah, I, I'm I give it to the Vikings. Doesn't mean I don't not respect the uh, Colts running back group here. All right, let's move on to defense. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. We forgot about tight ends here. Oh shit! Yeah, Jack well. Doyle, Mo Ali Cox. Sounds like and a movie Noah, I to watch. Yoda. Uh, yeah, you said it with the running backs. I think it's going to be the same most weeks with the Vikings when it comes to tight ends. Um, it's hard to beat Kyle Rudolph, Irv Smith Jr., and Tyler Konkadonk. Uh, Jack Doyle is a nice receiving tight end and a pretty damn good blocker, too. So I, I do like him, but I'm taking the Vikings here, no doubt. Yes, let's hope they actually do something this week. If they continue to do what they did last week, whether it was their fault or not, then we will start to rethink that strategy. But, yes, the Vikings – have some very good tight ends. Let's go to the defensive side of the ball. Let's do it. Let's jump over the D-line, take this whole thing as a unit. Uh, starters, defensive end, Danico Autry, the nice uh, piece they traded for DeForest Buckner, D-tackle. Other D-tackle is Grover, Melander, Stewart, and defensive end, Justin Houston. Uh, some depth there, Ben Banogu, it was a high pick this year or last year, I can't quite remember. Um, so there's some depth, there's some talent here. And I got to tell you, um, you would have asked me this a week ago, I probably would have gone with the Vikings. But after seeing the turd they laid last week, uh, it's the Colts, and it's actually – it's in a landslide. Yeah, it's not even close. Landslide, great song. Um, and, and they showed up last week. Uh, Buckner had a one and a half tackles for a loss. Uh, Autry had two sacks. Justin Houston had a sack. Um, and, uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're going to be good. They're going to be up in our face. DeForest Buckner – is going to have me up until Sunday sweating and uh, soul Justin Houston. They're, 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 they're loaded. Well, if I'm the Colts, I'm just putting Buckner over elf line and just laughing the whole game because it's going to be ugly. It is. And I'm, I'm really glad you said that. <laughs> so oh, scary. We, so we scary. Hines. One more time. Hines. All right. Hines. Uh, linebackers, uh, Colts, Bobby O'Kirky, Kirky, Anthony Walker, and one of the best in the NFL in Darius Leonard. Um, dare, dare you say the best? You could. You actually could. Uh, who are you taking here? It's kind of uh, it's kind of like the receivers. I mean, Darius Leonard. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to go Vikings, but it, it's kind of the opposite. I'm, I'm kind of being a hypocrite here because I went with the receivers just because of Thielen. I should be going – linebacker because of Darius Leonard but Anthony Barr did not have a very good showing last week Kendricks was the man Eric Wilson needs to step it up but if I had to take all three as a group I'm taking the Vikings yeah I gotta be honest other than Darius Leonard I'm not familiar with anybody really on this depth chart so um I would be lying if I said I, I wouldn't take the Vikings here um maybe I'm wrong but I feel like I'm very right I know uh Barr kind of struggled last week didn't really you know, even on the blitzes, he couldn't get home. Uh, Kendricks was all over the place. Wilson, yeah, he came out with a big old dud. But I think he's, you know, those two are going to really step it up. So uh, I'm taking the Vikings, no doubt here. Well, you know, uh, what's coming up is cornerback. And um, this ain't going to be pretty because I'm just going to cut to the chase here. The Colts have Xavier Rhodes, who we're very familiar with. Um, and I'm still taking the Colts. Yeah, I don't know how you can. Rocky in, nice rookie last year. In his second year, he's got experience. Um T.J. Carey, a guy who's who's very well versed, he's got a lot of NFL experience. Uh, Xavier Rhodes, um, you know the one thing about Rhodes, uh, and I you know, was on with the Colts guys yesterday. I told him he, as bad as he's been, he does step up against number one receivers. We saw it last year, uh, Julio Jones in the playoffs against Michael Thomas. Um, he came he came to play. He, he shut those guys down. Um, he seemed to struggle with the, the lower end types, but uh, I actually would have rather had Xavier Rhodes out there last week on Devontae Adams because clearly Holton Hill and company were not ready. So I'm taking the Colts. It's not a landslide here, but uh, it's it's pretty – the meter's way over on the Colts side. The Peter meter. And I would have took Xavier Rhodes with no arms um, over anybody last week. Uh, mm -hmm. Rhodes, did, Rhodes did not have a very good week one against the Jaguars. They targeted him three times, all three times. They had a reception, one for a long touchdown. Very gross. I went on Twitter and I'm actually watching some of the Colts fans – what they had to say about Rosen was very nice. But this just shows how bad we are off at cornerback right now because I would absolutely take the Colts' corners. Well, what the hell were they expecting? I mean – I don't know. It's probably like when we signed uh, – I don't know. I'm trying to think of somebody. Fred Smoot. Fred, Fred Smoot. 
and uh, we got the normal Fred Smoot. It's it's all the uh, the unknown. Um, but let's go to let's go to safety. Yeah, and uh, we said it with other positions, but to me, uh, Anthony Harris, Harrison Smith, maybe Georgia Loca are one of the best trifectas in the NFL. Uh, and I, I do like Kenny Moore and Malik Hooker that the Colts got Tavon Wilson as, as a depth piece there. That's a pretty damn good trio there. But uh, I think going against most teams, you would take the Colts, but not against the Vikings. No way in hell. And they also have George Odom Scrotum back there. Oh, don't, don't forget about him. So, yes, Vikings, uh, Vikings, yeah. Vikings, Vikings. Sorry, yeah. Hooker's good. Moore's good. We're better. Don't apologize. I'm not going to apologize. Let's wrap this hog up with special teams. All right. Uh, Colts punter, Rigoberto Sanchez, uh, place kicker, Rodrigo Blankenship, uh, long snapper, really good, solid long snapper in Luke Rhodes. And uh, return man, your boy. I got this. Naheem Hines. All right. My favorite right. ketchup. Uh, yeah, I think it's everybody's, uh, no doubt. Um yeah, I, I guess I would go just – I'll go with the Colts here. Why not? Yeah. Riggle Bertel's a damn good punter. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really a separation here is how good their punter is. Yeah, and Blankenship, uh, the rookie kicker with those beautiful, beautiful shades that he wears. Colts, absolutely. Um, Hines is a very good returner. And, uh, they, they, yeah, they, they got us here. They got us. They do, but it's it's pretty close. You can almost call this a push if you're really, really pushing push, it. But I'll give push, it to the Colts. Push. All right, so let's, uh, let's, let's rattle through this quick. We had the Vikings at quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, almost a clean slate at offense, except Colts get offensive line. When it comes to defense, the Colts got defensive line, Vikings linebackers, Colts corners, Vikings safeties, and the Colts special team. So, you know, pretty heavy on the Vikings. I'm really hoping for that W. Yeah, yeah, it is. And uh, I think the key will be if, if our corners can keep uh, T.Y. Hilton, Michael Pittman, and Zach Pascal and Paris Campbell out of the end zone. Uh, I think they're going to get their yards. That's for damn sure. And uh, we'll see. We'll see. Pressure has to be there up front. But we're not going to get into that right now. Nope. What we are going to get into is this. The inventor of the Pringles can is now buried in one. Oh. Mm. 